We're here to let you know that uh, the speaker's race is over and the Texas House is ready to go to work. Dennis Bonin is a real smart guy, and he's absolutely committed to the, the, the efficient operation, productive operation of the House of Representatives. He's hardworking, he cares deeply for the state of Texas, and he's gonna be a wonderful speaker. Very encouraged by Mr. Bonin's um, public uh, and private uh, commitments to bipartisanship. Yeah, I, I think Dennis is gonna focus us on the priorities of the state, no doubt. Education, property tax relief and reform, criminal justice reform. Transitions are, are normal and, and they can be very healthy. So I, th I think it's a good opportunity for the House to reset. Uh, five terms is a long time for any speaker. We had at first open speakers race in 25 years. You had five, six, seven people in the race. Forget the Democrat because he was never going to be speaker, but you had a bunch of Republicans. They were going to do hand-to-hand -hand combat. It was going to be great. And then all of a sudden it fizzled out. And so all of us who are in the press are going, what happened? Where was our drama? Where's my drama? Well, Bonin, you know, he was, the, he ran the shortest campaign of them all. He entered the race last and he was able within a matter of a couple weeks or maybe a few weeks even to come out of the gates and announce that he had support from not the 76 needed to win election within the entire chamber, but he had 109. We thought it was gonna be down to the wire and that the, you know, the Republican caucus, Stickland would have Drew Darby in a headlock, pummeling his face, you know, and then Zerwas would come flying in off the turnbuckle with a chair and hit Stickler in the head. None of that actually happened. Bonin just basically pickpocketed everybody when they weren't looking. He spent well over 20 years in the House. He was elected in his 20s, and he just kind of rose through the ranks. He was a highly regarded ally of Joe Strauss. He served as Speaker Pro Temp, which is a position that the Speaker of the House kind of appoints to somebody who they uh, hold in high regard and, and or, you know, somebody who's well respected among members. And on top of that, never really being afraid to uh, say things the, the way he saw them. No one, no one, no one, no one thinks Dennis Bonin does not know how to make a fist. In fact, he knows how to make two fists. Okay? I think one of the reasons Dennis Bonin appealed to people is he will stand up for the House and he will not take shit from the Senate or from the governor's office or from the outside groups or from anybody. I mean, it is entirely plausible that the lieutenant governor, to the degree that he needs to meet his match, will have absolutely met his match in Dennis Bonin. The House is compromised enough on this issue. It's absurd that bathroom bills have taken on greater urgency than fixing our school finance system. So it was at the tail end of the 2017 session and for weeks we had been waiting to see how this fight over the bathroom bill would be resolved. The bathroom bill fight was over proposed restrictions on which bathrooms transgender people could use. And eventually, uh, Speaker Strauss had a press conference, which is an unusual move for him, and said, we're not going to go any further on this. And maybe within 10 minutes, we all got a notice in our inboxes to rush over to the exact room on the other side of the Capitol where the Lieutenant Governor was going to respond. But Speaker Strauss is apparently not concerned about what Texans think, only what he thinks. He says he has compromised enough, but in fact he has not compromised at all. It was a moment that in a lot of ways exemplified the sort of power the Speaker can wield in determining which bills get considered. That night showed that even though Speaker Strauss throughout his tenure said, you know, this is not a dictatorship, this is about the will of the House, the speaker at the end of the day has a lot of power to determine which bills get onto the floor and which bills get ultimately passed. Being 65 eyes and 77 nays, the motion to table fails. So right now we're in the fantasy time. We're in the fan fiction version of a speaker's race where they've got a guy and they're all like, whew, this could have been worse. The Democrats are thinking they could have had speaker crazy pants on the right. And 
The Republicans, especially the conservatives, are thinking, God, if this had gone the wrong way, then we would have had speaker communist over here on the left. House members are excited for the most part that you know, Bonin is going to be the guy who they're able to kind of trust as a leader who will let them vote their districts and, and protect you know, the House's broader interests when it comes to that. It's a little bit like buying a new car. The minute you drive it off the lot the first time, the value of it drops. The value of the Dennis Bonin vehicle will drop precipitously on the first day that the House drives him off the lot. And after he's actually speaker, everybody starts shooting him. I think the biggest question now is, is Dennis Bonin going to, to lead as speaker the way that he's been as a House member, right? Is he going to be as blunt? Is he going to be as forceful? And all these things that he's kind of defined himself to be in recent years, will he remain that way? And that's just something that I think we're all just going to have to watch and, and see how that plays out. The formal vote will come on the first day of session where the entire 150 member uh, chamber, uh, that's their first order of business is to formally elect their new speaker. You know, I'm still hoping for drama, always. And again, I think, you know, he'll be speaker fine, but there'll be plenty of time for drama.